are my friends? How are you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of the Premier League show. This weekend's football in the Premier League is absolutely massive. We have got two massive derbies coming up on Sunday. It is going to be a scintillating weekend of football. I have, of course, as a result, got two games of the week to talk about and they're going to come very late on in today's episode. But my friends, uh, we are here again for the Week 14 Prediction Show. That's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Uh, we are obviously going to come to you guys by way of Fan Zone at the very end of today's episode. I'm not going to hang around for too much longer. The one thing I do want to bring to your attention though, before we crack on is please do, if you haven't already done so, go and watch the Weekly Waffle on the channel. It is above right now. Basically, the reason I'm asking you to go and watch that is if you're a regular to the Premier League show, there's plenty of updates with regards to this show, how the roundup is potentially going to work from here on out and the special one-off shows. You really need to go and watch it because it's going to outline how the Premier League show is going to work from now on. So yes, that's all I need to do as far as that's concerned. Now we need to preview some football games. Okay, my friends, so here we go. You're going to see one fixture appearing on your screen right now. It is a Friday night kickoff. We're going to talk about that one first. Uh, then we'll crack on with the big, big games on Saturday and Sunday. But yes, Cardiff versus Wolves is going to take place on Friday night uh, on Sky Sports live at 8 o'clock. Tune in if you can, because this is the first time these two clubs have ever met in the Premier League. Um... Wolves are on a poor run of form at this very moment in time, aren't they? Uh, no win in five, and it culminated in a terrible home defeat to Huddersfield last weekend. Some of the players were being booed off the pitch. I think that's a bit much, considering that Wolves are a newly promoted team. I follow a lot of Wolves accounts on Twitter as a result of uh, Dave Esapardi. I've you know, met that guy. We, we are involved in the FN community, and he's a big Wolves fan. As a result, I follow a few Wolves accounts, and a lot of them were saying, that it was completely uncalled for. You know, you are forgetting that you've just been promoted to the Premier League. Yes, your early season form, maybe that hype did get to maybe some of the fans and some of the players, and that's why you've tailed off ever so slightly. But you've had some very big games and some hard games in recent weeks. Uh, since the Liverpool game, Cardiff, for me, have been much better. They've been a team that have been slowly, slowly improving. Um, they might have only won one game in their last three matches, but there are promising signs, I think. Uh, you know, obviously that big performance against Brighton when you got the 2-1 win was a phenomenal result for Cardiff and it was three points that they really really needed and it's no surprise that the improved performances of certain players has really helped them. Uh, Kadeem Harris is a guy who I've been watching over the last few weeks who has really really caught my attention and I think he's been a big reason in the uh, you know the improvement in the final third and it sort of compounded how good Cardiff have been going forward and there's a lot of doom and gloom where Cardiff are concerned. A lot of people are writing them off every single week Week, but I like to give them the benefit of the doubt from what I have been seeing. Yes, some of the football can be a bit route one. Yes, it can be a bit boring. But if it's getting the job done, why should it matter? Uh, I have my score result for this one, Friday night games, uh, usually never really that good, really not that scintillating. These are two teams that are, you know, a bit up and down. Like I've said, Wolves are really looking for that win and a result that they, you know, could improve their season again. Cardiff are going okay, even though they've only won one game in their last three. I'm going to go over a draw. Can't separate them. Score draw 1-1. One, one. We're now going to move on, my friends, to the Saturday fixtures. You're going to see all of them appearing on your screen as we speak. And the first one we're going to talk about, because there's no early kickoffs this week, is Crystal Palace versus Burnley. This is the first of the three o'clockers that we're going to talk about. Uh, last five meets between these two teams in the Premier League have resulted in two wins for Crystal Palace and three wins for Burnley. The last meet was a 1-0 win to Crystal Palace in this very fixture uh, last season. Uh, Crystal Palace, very, very unlikely lucky in my opinion not to take all three points against Manchester United I've got a couple of people that support Crystal Palace that follow me on Twitter I was having a little chat with them uh, last week I thought they were bitterly bitterly unlucky not to take all three points especially that chance when Townsend wriggled through oh if only he'd have hit it with his other foot and you probably would have scored but I thought that they were the better team on the day there are small improvements that are starting to shine through but their lack of goals is what's holding them back they are just not clinical enough and that worries me. For me, in January, 
they need to go and buy a goal scorer. Benteke hasn't done it for them. Zaha can't be relied on every single week to go and nab the goals. Townsend just can't seem to find the back of the net at the moment. They need to go and buy a goal scorer, someone who's going to nick them a few. Uh, West Ham have got Andy Carroll, if you're interested. If you can get him fit, he'll score your goals. But yeah, I think that's just what they need and they might start winning football matches. But the improvements are there. But uh, obviously they're coming up against a Burnley team this weekend who are really struggling. No win in six for Burnley now. And uh, for me, I, it may have been 2-1. It might have been back and forth. But I thought they were the worst team in their game last week against Newcastle. Um, the defence is unusually letting them down. It's usually so solid under Sean Dyche. But this season, they are leaking goals at an alarming rate once again and he needs to get that sorted out he needs to get that tightened up if they're going to improve their fortunes this season as far as this game's concerned I know I've just been talking about Crystal Palace not having a goal scorer but I am going to go with a home win to Crystal Palace a 2-0 on the day uh, the next of the 3 o'clock as we're going to talk about my friends is Huddersfield Versus Brighton and Hove Albion. Uh, they've only met twice in the Premier League. Of course, both coming last season when both of them were promoted to the Premier Division. Uh, one win for Huddersfield and one draw. The last result was a 1-1 draw at the Amex. And uh, Huddersfield won this game last season. And their form, they're another team whose form is slowly, slowly improving. They're on a run of games now uh, that's being put together. No loss in three games. Very impressive problem, it has to be said. A great three points away at Wolves last week. And they were excellent in that game as well. Very physical I thought Billing was top class for him but the man that really stood out for me and really is the difference maker for Huddersfield you know usually if they win games this guy's had a good game and it is of course Aaron Moy I wouldn't mind having him at West Ham he is different gravy compared to what else they've got on offer there and he just seems to be finding form at the right time and he is helping Paul Huddersfield up that table uh you know they're still struggling they're still down there towards the bottom but there are improvements and signs of improvement as well. Uh, Brian and Hove Albion are on a bit of a strange run of form as far as I'm concerned. There's no real consistency to them. At home, they're phenomenal. On the road, they just find it very, very difficult. And, uh, you know, it's compounded by the fact they've only picked up four points on the road this season. So you can just tell how many of their points, should you look at the league table, they have picked up at home. So they need to, they need to improve that. And, uh, you know, this weekend would be a good starting point, wouldn't it? But... Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. I can't really separate these two based on how Huddersfield uh, seem to be creeping up the table and Brighton are going about their business in their usual way but struggling on the road. I'm going to go with a score draw, a 1-1 in the game. Uh, next up, my friends, we are going to talk Leicester versus Watford. Uh, the last five meets between these two, three wins to Leicester, two wins to Watford, and the last meet was a 2-0 win uh, to Leicester at the King Power in this fixture last season. Uh, Leicester had to dig deep, didn't they, last weekend to take that point against Brighton um, obviously wasn't made easy from Madison sending off um, a silly sending off as well with two yellow cards and you know they're going to be without him now because of that and as a result and the reason why I say it's silly is because of what he's come out and said he admitted to anticipating contact and then went down because he thought he was going to get it. He didn't get it and he actually put his hands up and said, I deserve the yellow card. But what I would like to say to that young man is don't anticipate the contact. Just fucking keep going and try and score the goal. Then if you do get contact, proper contacts, just stop trying to cheat it basically is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you're trying to win a free kick or a penalty or whatever, but just stop trying to cheat the system. Why can't we have some honesty in football? And I, I expected a bit better because he's been one of the players of the season, not only for Leicester, but one of the young players in the league. He's been one of the better buyers in the summer. And I'm just a bit disappointed that he, that young man has, got, has gone about his business like that. But, you know, they did dig deep. Vardy did score the penalty. They took a point. And, you know, it's a difficult time for Leicester. It really is. I know that we should still be talking about it, but... The death of their owner, the unfortunate events that happened, it's going to play an effect for the rest of the season, surely. But, um, you know, Watford, we're going to talk about them now. After a great start, they seem to be slipping into a very up-and-down season and very familiar territory if you're a Watford fan. Uh, no win in their last three does see them in desperate need of a W. I know they've played some difficult games recently, but they're, again, a bit like Brian, there's no real consistency to Watford at the moment. And I think that they're a better team than results currently are suggesting. Uh, 
Uh, I see goals in this one. I don't know why, but I just feel like this is going to be one of the games of the weekend. I do see some goals in it, and I'm going to go with a score draw, a 2-2 in the fixture. Um, next up, we're going to talk about Manchester City versus Bournemouth. Last five in the Premier League between these two teams, five wins to Manchester City. Bournemouth have played Manchester City six times in the league and have never beat them. Uh, last meet was a 4-0 win in this fixture last season. Um... I could carry on coming on here week after week praising Manchester City like I do and, you know, just have been orgasmic about Manchester City. I said they would beat West Ham 4-0 last weekend and they did that. Uh, they, they they absolutely put them to the sword. But instead of, you know, get, having a wet dream over Manchester City this weekend, uh, this for this weekend's pictures, I thought I'd give you some stats. And so here we go. They are averaging three goals a game in the Premier League. With only five goals conceded and eight clean sheets, they have the best defence in the league. They've already notched 40 goals in the Premier League this season. That's in 13 games, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, only Salah has been involved in more goal opportunities than Sterling in the last year. I believe Salah has been involved in 52 and Sterling has been involved in 41. Pretty fucking incredible if you ask me. They are a sensational football team. I'm not going to go on because it just becomes laughable how good they are. They are a phenomenal football team and really do Bournemouth stand a chance this weekend? Probably not. Bournemouth are going to be up against it in this game. They're on a run of games where they've met a lot of the big boys recently. And I think that's why results have, you know, taken a bit of a downward turn. I still think they're having a sensational season. And I think that Eddie Howe is doing a quite brilliant job for Bournemouth, despite those recent losses. I was reading something about Eddie Howe as well this week when he was taken on as caretaker manager, when they were almost ready to go bankrupt out of the Football League. And now look at him. Now look at him. He's managing them in the top half of the Premier League. What a phenomenal job he has done at that football club. Uh, as far as the result for this game is concerned, I, I really can't look past Manchester City in this one. And I'm going to go with a home win, a 3-0 to City. Uh, next, we're going to talk Newcastle versus my boys, West Ham United. Uh, last five meets in the Premier League between the two teams. There's four wins for Newcastle, one win for West Ham. The last meet was a 3-2 to Newcastle at the London Stadium uh, last season. Um, with the win on Monday night, Newcastle made that three wins on the bounce. What a time for Newcastle to find form when they're going to be playing West Ham at home. Uh, just incredible, isn't it? They found form at the perfect time, uh, in my opinion, as well, around about Christmas, pulling away from danger. It's really open them. And I think the biggest thing is the amount of chances they're creating. Yes, they are still a bit lackadaisy in front of goal. I still don't think they're as clinical as they need to be. But I believe they created 18 chances against Burnley in that game on Monday night, which is pretty incredible when you think where Newcastle were a few weeks ago. And now we're sitting here and their nine points from the last three games is, is a sensational, sensational effort. West Ham haven't won back-to-back -back games. Talking of winning back-to-back, -back, they haven't won back-to-back -back games in almost two years. Yes, when January comes around, West Ham will not have won back-to-back -back games in two years. And for me, it's quite... Just, it's unforgivable, that stat. And again, I'm going to come on and rant again. I'm annoyed at things that I'm seeing, um, you know, said... Do you know what annoyed me the most about that loss against Manchester City was the lack of fight and effort. No one put a challenge in. No one could be bothered to close down. Yes, I know we had chances and I think that maybe I am a little too harsh sometimes on the football club. But even though it's Manchester City, you shouldn't go into that game with the attitude of if we lose this, it doesn't matter. You at least try to fucking win it. And West Ham did Anything but that, in my opinion. And uh, and the attitude of the manager, he said, now that the Manchester City game is out of the way, we've now got a run of seven games where we can pick up points, but it's going to be hard. It's almost his way of saying, do you know what? If we lose a few, don't blame me. I don't want that. I want a more positive attitude. I want a fucking fight from this football club because we haven't seen it since we moved to this new stadium. And that's not me blaming the stadium. I'm just saying we haven't seen it since we moved. It's just unforgivable now. Surely the football club has to take a look at itself and try to move forward because it just isn't. The season's indifferent. It's inconsistent. And it's just not helping matters. We are slowly becoming one of those teams that is consistently just going to finish between 11th and 15th. I honestly believe that. Uh, it's also looking doubtful that Arnie is going to be taking place in the game because of him uh, limping off against Man City. We all know he's been carrying this knock in his knee. I don't think he should be playing anyway, but obviously West Ham rely on him far too heavily. Some would say this is good news, but Andy Carroll's back. Apparently he's fit. Apparently he can play. If you're me, 
that's not what you want to hear because it means we go back to football of the dark ages where we play hoof ball, we lump it up to him, he comes in, he scores a couple of dark goals, he becomes the messiah, then he goes down injured and then he fucks off again. I can't fucking stand Andy Carroll. I can't stand him. What a waste of a footballer. He is stealing a living at West Ham and, I, God, the quicker we can see the back of him, the better. As far as this game is concerned, I have no confidence in it that West Ham are going to go and get anything from Newcastle. Their form's improving. We have a shit record at... Uh, at their stadium I'm going to go with a 2-1 win to Newcastle I'm hoping I can be more positive uh, you know very very soon about West Ham United Next up, ladies and gents, we are going to talk about the late fixture on the Saturday. It's the 5.30 kickoff live on BT Sports between Southampton and Manchester United. Uh, the last five meets between these two in the Premier League have finished with three wins to Manchester United and two draws. The last meet was a 0-0 at Old Trafford last season. Um... Southampton, you found the net twice last week and it still wasn't good enough to get the win. You have to be disappointed. This is a football club that struggles to score goals. They go and score two and they still can't get the win. Uh, Fulham used you as a stepping stone to bounce back, didn't they? And I just got, to feel, got to feel for Southampton in that one. Uh, they are now no wins in nine games. When will Mark Hughes' job start to be up for debate. When will it start to be that the pressure starts to build on this manager? Because you don't hear of it. But this is a terrible run for Southampton. I believe they dropped into the bottom three. Southampton, when you look at their players, that team on paper, it's better than what they're doing at the moment. And surely that has to come down. The buck has to stop with the manager. I just, I, they're a weird club that I can't work out at the moment. Uh, let's move on to Manchester United. Now, Manchester United fans, you're either going to love this or you're going to hate this. And I feel like if there's one person who will say this and just not give a shit, it's me. But also, because my brother's a Manchester United fan and what I hear him say to me, I feel like I'm allowed to say what I'm about to say. And basically, Jose Mourinho is a fucking embarrassment. He really is. Um, this Manchester United team that he's in charge of, it's actually not a bad team when you look at the players on paper. The defence needs a lot of work, but this is a team that... No disrespect to young boys or Crystal Palace, but this is a team that has, you know, £500 million has been spent on in the last few years since Jose took over, and he cannot beat Crystal Palace at home, and he struggled to beat young boys midweek in the Champions League. That is unfucking forgivable This is not the Manchester United the fans grew up with. Even I... You know, I grew up with a Manchester United that took no prisoners. It fucking beat everyone. And someone like Young Boys midweek in the Champions League is a sort of team that would have hammered 3 or 4-0 a few years back. But I do not know what is going on. But surely he has to come back to Jose. And he's an embarrassment because what is he doing throwing bottles around? And he's, and he's body language when Rashford missed against Young Boys as well when he turned around and shrugged his shoulders. That ain't on. You're supposed to be putting your arm around the young man and supporting him. But it just doesn't seem like the players have got that. No wonder the Manchester United faithful are losing the plot. You know, full time Devils is becoming the new AFTV honestly the amount of views they're getting they must be loving it but it's just wrong and you know on top of all that as well have, have you looked at the state of some of the players there was an image that went up online Lukaku last season Lukaku this season he honestly looks like he's been in the fucking sweet shop just eating and eating and eating he has packed it on and they just don't look fit and they don't look at it. They don't look like they know what they want to be. They're so far behind Manchester City. This is a team that, for me, should be competing. Top four, even with the team it's got. It's a big football club, but it has gone wrong. And for me, it's all got to come down to Jose. When, when, when will he be given the boot? Because he is holding the football club back. And I expect the football club to struggle again this weekend. I don't know why, considering Southampton never won in nine. But... I'm going with a draw, a score draw, a 1-1. One, one. I think Southampton are going to nick something. Uh, ladies and gents, we are now going to move on to the Sunday fixtures. And uh, we've got three big games. Obviously, the first one we talk about is a London derby. But the last two, wow. They are massive. They are two of the biggest games in the Premier League calendar. But first up, Chelsea versus Fulham. Live on Sky Sports at 12 o'clock. Try and sit down and tune in, ladies and gents, for what will be a very, very good game. Uh, the last five meetings between these two in the Premier League. Three wins to Chelsea, two draws. Last meet was a 3-1 win to Chelsea back in 2014 at Craven Cottage. Um, Chelsea, obviously, their undefeated run in the Premier League came to its end last week 
at the hands of Tottenham Hotspur. And, uh, their defence just fell to bits, didn't it? It really, really did. And what on earth was David Luiz doing for the majority of that game? He got turned inside out on more than one occasion. Um, I've said week after week, for everything they do well going forward, it was only a matter of time before they got found out of the back. And, you know... This is a good team, Tottenham, and they were going to expose those weaknesses, and they did. Uh, Fulham would do their, could do themselves a favour by watching the footage and maybe trying to do the same. Just stick some pace on those fullbacks and run at those centre backs because they did not like it, did they? In that game, fully expect Chelsea to bounce back, but it wasn't a good result last week. Um, Fulham did bounce back, though, didn't they, last week with a really good win against Southampton. Fulham scored three goals. Pretty good stuff. Fulham get a win. First time in forever. And Ranieri, with him at the helm, seems to have helped Fulham bounce back. Uh, they still look shaky at the back. Obviously, they did concede two goals. We do still have to worry about that if we're a Fulham fan, don't we? But... I think in the game overall, they looked a much better team. Ranieri may be the man to save their season. And a top uh, little stat to know about Ranieri is he has one of the best records as a manager against the top uh, four to six teams. Uh, he has a win ratio of about 60% against those big boys. So who knows, Fulham fans? Dream, dream away. Uh, but as far as this picture is concerned, I'm going to go with a home win. I am going to go with a 2-1 win to Chelsea. They're just going to bounce back and be a bit too much for Fulham. Um, we now come to the North London derby, ladies and gentlemen. Arsenal versus Tottenham live on Sky Sports app five past two last five in the Premier League between these two teams a win to Arsenal two wins to Tottenham two draws the last meet was a 1-0 to Tottenham at Wembley last season the North London derby is one of the biggest games like I've already said in the English uh, league calendar uh, and it comes at a time when both these teams are on a bit of a roll Spurs may be on a better roll than Arsenal at the moment Arsenal have dropped some points in recent week but this is, you know, Tottenham are playing well. Arsenal are far improved from life under Wenger. You know, Emre's got them playing some good stuff. Um, Arsenal finally got a win last week after three consecutive draws against teams, in my opinion, they should have been beating. Bournemouth still caused them problems, though. That has to be said. And uh, a lot like Chelsea have said it all season. As good as they look going forward, there's still question marks over that defence. And, you know, this is a good Tottenham team. Will they be asking questions of it? Um, Son, last week for uh, Tottenham, was sensational. Now, I'm going to say something. If Messi scores that goal he scores, you don't hear the end of it. That is a phenomenal goal. The turn of pace. The dribbling. He turned Louise inside out. He went past Jorgino like he weren't there. And he had... Enough about him to finish past the goalkeeper. He's got to go down as one of the goals of the season. It was sensational. Could that could that pace and that turn of pace help against this Arsenal team? Who knows? They're going to have to give it a go though, aren't they? But Tottenham really are putting a run together at the moment. They're looking better and better each week under Pochettino. I think this is going to be a real, real tasty North London derby. I think we're going to see goals. Plenty of them. Maybe we'll see a sending off. Maybe we'll just see something crazy. But I think this is going to be a real, real good game. This isn't Wenger's Arsenal, you have to remember. I think they're going to be a lot harder to turn over. I'm going to go with a score draw in this one. I'm going to go with a 2-2. And we come to our last game of the weekend, and it is the Merseyside derby, ladies and gents. I said we were spoilt for choice this weekend when the football was concerned. Uh, it's going to take place live on Sky Sports at quarter past for Liverpool versus Everton. The last five between these two in the league. Three wins to Liverpool and two draws. The last meet was a 0-0 at Goodison Park last season season uh the Merseyside derby is uh spoiling us it really is because north london derby then this i can't quite believe it but uh liverpool without hendo he was dismissed weren't he last time around two yellow cards personally think they're both a bit soft but they've got talent they've got players they can bring him in and i'm sure they'll be well up for this game liverpool liverpool continue to keep pace with manchester city this season and uh you know a big w in this one could really push their season on and could be real, real top stuff. Uh, for me, though, where Liverpool are concerned, I think one thing uh, I think needs to improve is that front three haven't clicked in the same manner they did last season. This could be the game that gets that going. But Firmino last week against Watford, Jesus Christ, he was ending careers, mate. Did we see that little drag back uh, sort of nutmeg on Deeney? Phenomenal stuff. Um, Everton have been far improved lately, uh, driven on by, you know, the rich vein of form of Richarlison and the improved form of Sigerson and Tossan in my opinion they're playing some top top stuff and I gotta be honest if there was one Everton team that could potentially give this Liverpool team some problems it's this one I think they're playing some real good football at the moment and obviously we all know Marco Silva is a more attack minded manager and I don't think he'll be scared to go for it in the game I think it'll be a top top Merseyside derby to sit down and watch but as far as the score is concerned 
leaning towards Liverpool. I'm going to go with a 2-1. We now come to the part of the show that I absolutely love the most, ladies and gents, and it is, of course, Fan Zone. Uh, I've got four fan predictions to read out this week. Now, my friends, as far as Fan Zone is concerned, going forward, each and every week, I'm going to need you to leave your predictions in the comment section below. Uh, if you watch the weekly waffle, you'll know why. The Roundup show, probably not going to be any more. Uh, I apologise if that's broken some hearts, but we're literally going to be doing everything through the prediction show from now on. So you will see on your screen... That's where you can find the fixtures. Leave your predictions below for the following week and I will read the best ones out next time around. Uh, my friends though, let's get crack on with the predictions that have been left. The first one by... 30-24-7. Uh, he did leave a little comment at the top. I've had to get rid of it so that I could fit everything in. But he said, uh, sorry, I haven't been commenting recently. YouTube never shows the notifications for your videos. But anyway, I'll do my predictions now. Yes, I apologize for that. YouTube are fucking useless at notifying people when new content goes out. But uh, their week 14 predictions. Crystal Palace to beat Burnley by two goals to one. Uh, Zaha Hart, Maya votes with the goals. Uh, Huddersfield won, Brighton won. Uh, Depotoir and Murray with the goals. Leicester won, uh, Watford won. Uh, Gray and Pereira with the goals. Man Man City 4, Bournemouth 1, Aguero, Hattrick, Gundogan and Fraser with the goals. Newcastle to be defeated by two goals to one against West Ham. Probably not going to happen, but Perez, Anderson and Arnautovic with the goals. Arnautovic won't be scoring, unfortunately, because he is injured. Uh, Southampton, Manchester United 2-2, two -two, going with a draw, thinking along the same lines as me. Ings, Austin, Marshall and Mata with the goals. Chelsea 3, Fulham 1, Morata, Hazard, Pedro and Mitrovic with the goals. Arsenal 2, Spurs 2, Aubameyang, Lacazette and Kane Brace in the game. Liverpool 2, Everton 2. Really surprised that he sees Everton nicking a point. But anything can happen. Mane, Salah, Richarlison and Bernard with the goals in the game. Very interesting predictions. That has to be said. Uh, next up, we're going to come to Rick Kiar Wong. I think that's how we're pronouncing that. Apologies if it's not. Um... Week 14 predictions are as follows. Cardiff to be defeated by Wolves by two goals to one. Palace to beat Burnley by two goals to one. Huddersfield to be defeated by Brighton by two goals to one. Leicester and Watford to finish 2-2. Got the same thinking as me. Manchester City to be defeated by Bournemouth by... Uh, so, sorry, Manchester City to defeat Bournemouth by four goals to nil. Newcastle, West Ham to share the point in a 2-2 draw. Southampton to be uh, defeated by Manchester United by three goals to nil. Chelsea to beat Fulham by four goals to nil. Arsenal to just pip Spurs in a 3-2 win. And Liverpool to smash Everton in a free niller. Lovely little uh, predictions uh, that one was. Uh, next up we've got predictions from Ryan Stevens. Uh, Cardiff are to be defeated by two goals to nil against Wolves. Palace and Burnley to share the point in a 1-1. Huddersfield to defeat Brighton in a 2-1 win. Leicester to just beat Watford in a 1-0. Man City to hammer Bournemouth in a 5-1 win. Newcastle to beat West Ham by three goals to one. Southampton to be defeated by Manchester United by two goals to nil. Uh, Chelsea to win 3-0 against Fulham. Arsenal Spurs to share the spoils in a 2-2 and Liverpool to defeat Everton in a 4-2 win very very interesting and a lot of goals in that one as well that would be a lovely match of the day to watch wouldn't it and the last one we are going to talk about this week comes from Bottle of Bleach and their weekend predictions are Cardiff to be defeated by Wolves by two goals to nil. A lot of people going with that result. Uh, Palace to defeat Burnley by three goals to one. Huddersfield and Brighton to share a point in a nil-nil. Leicester to just beat Watford in a 2-1. City to score four past Bournemouth in a 4-1 win. Newcastle to be defeated by West Ham by two goals to nil. Man U to just beat Southampton in this one in a 2-1. Uh, Chelsea to win 3-2 against Fulham. Arsenal and Spurs in a 2-2. A lot of people are going with a 2-2 draw. And Liverpool to just beat Everton in a 3-2 win. Brilliant stuff, ladies and gentlemen, from all of you. Thank you all for sending in your predictions. Uh, as well as predictions for next week, do feel free to be sending in your questions, your comments, all that good stuff. You'll see it on the screen now, the stuff that I'm asking for. Uh, feel free, and I will mention some of that in the next predictions show. Um, but that is it, my friends. We are all done for the week 14 predictions. So there you are, my friends. We are done and dusted with the predictions for this week. I thank each and every one of you for getting your fan zone predictions in. I apologise that I can't read every single one of them out, but I do get a hell of a lot of comments. Uh, also, my friends, there's going to be two prediction shows next week. We've got midweek football as well as weekend football, so I'm up against it. But you can expect prediction shows for both of them, so stay tuned to the channel. Now, I hope your team gets on all right this uh, weekend, my friends, but that is it from me. If you're new to the channel, like, share and subscribe. It really is appreciated. Bye, yeah, boy. But until next time, I've been Dan. You've been Legends. This has been the Premier League Show. Peace out, my homies. I salute you all, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one, my friends. <laughs>